Greetings, this is Jeff Riddle. I'm the pastor of Christ Reformed Baptist Church in Louisa, Virginia. And this is going to be an audio version of a book review, not a book review that I have written, but a book review that was written by a fellow named Robert Vaughn, who is the pastor of the Old Prospect Baptist Church in Mount Enterprise, Texas. And I have his permission to do a reading of this review. I'm also going to post his written review to my academia.edu page. Uh, Robert Vaughn's uh, book review was of the book that I co-edited, Why I Preached from the Received Text, an anthology of essays by Reform Ministers. And I co-edited the book with Christian M. McShaffrey, and it was published by the Greater Heritage Christian Publishing in 2022. The book is 280 pages in length. Robert Vaughn's review of our book appeared in the Bible League Quarterly, number 494, the July-September of 2023 issue, and it can be found there on pages 32 through 34. So let's move on, and I'm going to read uh, now Robert Vaughn's review. He writes, Why I Preach from the Received Text expands and extends the available resources confronting the dominant modern text criticism and its associated texts and translations. Confessional bibliology leaders slash pastors Christian McChaffrey and Jeffrey Riddle Edit the work joined by a supporting cast of 22 Reformed ministers and one deacon. The editors build this work with a simple design around a simple question to the contributors. Why do you preach from the received text? The answers furnish the chapters of the book. The answers have both simple significance and complex contents. Why I Preach from the Received Text is a valuable contribution to the field of bibliology. The editors launch the book with an editorial introduction on pages 13 to 19, which demonstrates why this book matters. Quote, Modern academic textual criticism rejects divine preservation and therefore proceeds to pursue reconstruction of the text based on human reasoning. End quote, page 15. Quote, the primary purpose of this book is a defense of the traditional, original Hebrew and Greek text of the Bible. End quote, page 17. The goal of testifying, teaching, and encouraging is soaked in prayer. Quote, may the Lord use this book as an instrument to stimulate, revive, confirm, and defend intelligent and effective usage of the traditional texts of the Word of God. End quote, page 19. The book's subtitle explains that this is a collection of writings by various authors. The contributors are, quote, men who were gladly laboring in the trenches of local church ministry, end quote, page 16. These authors exhibit both unity and diversity. Unity on the text of the Bible and Reformed theology with diversity of denominational affiliation and geographical location. 24 of the chapter authors are preachers. One essay displays a layman's perspective. A Baptist deacon explains why he wants to be preached to from the received text. The choice of introducing the essays in an alphabetical order suggests that all these essays are equally important. The reader can fruitfully follow the established order or may read them in any order. The essays not only complement each other, but also are capable of standing alone. The book's style, conversational with short chapters and a little larger than usual print, makes it easy to read. Following these essays, the editors return with a practical appendix, which offers steps towards change. The book testifies and teaches, but also propels and persuades. The approach of steps towards change is not academic, but pastoral, geared to local church ministry. An annotated bibliography on pages 261 to 276 rounds out the work. Rather than give a bare list, the editors chose brief descriptions and evaluations of each work. 
providing not only possible resources, but also careful guidance in selecting them. The bibliography is divided into 13 sections, beginning with books, pamphlets, and tracts, and concluding with websites that defend the traditional text. Why I Preach from the Received Text balances testimony and theology. Some authors, quote, from a child, end quote, knew the traditional text, and some, quote, fetched a compass, end quote, to get there. The authors are English speakers residing in Australia, Canada, United Kingdom, and the United States. Consequently, they preach from the received text, usually via the authorized version, or sometimes the New King James Version. Though expressing consistent support for the authorized or King James Bible, they are not King James Version onlyists. They arrive at their common positions from their confession that original language copies of the scriptures have been kept pure in all ages. They present the positive and negative, what is right with the received text and what is wrong with the critical text through testimonial, theological, and historical approaches. The authors believe they have, quote, scripture, theology, reason, and history on our side, end quote, page 259. The angles of approach allow each individual author to focus on the traditional text in his own way. For example, Puyan Mirshai notes the value of a definitive text, quote, the TR-based historic translations in various languages give the church a standard and unifying text of the Holy Scriptures, end quote, page 171. Christopher Sheffield relates his journey, quote, I did not set out to disprove the claims of the modern critical texts, only to understand them. But as time went on, I became increasingly convinced that the modern critical text and the philosophy which undergirded it was an affront to the honor of God, the glory of Christ, and the good of the church, end quote, page 206. Due to the number of contributors, the essays are short. Some readers may find themselves wishing for more. Nevertheless, the brevity and autonomy of the chapters has an intrinsic sufficiency and well suits the reader with a busy schedule. Due to the testimonial nature of the essays, there is an inevitable amount of repetition. However, that can edify rather than annoy the reader. Good variety with repetition unified on a central theme is not inherently a bad thing. The synopsis of the book is succinctly summed up in Scott Meadows' chapter title, Why Do I Preach from the Received Text? It's the Word of God. See page 160. The theological position promoted by the contributors to this book sets their view above and apart from supporters of the modern critical text and Bibles translated from it. For the latter, there must always be some question whether all of it is the Word of God. The contributors to this book do not settle for a gospel that is mostly good news, spiritual food that is mostly good food, or a spiritual sword that is mostly sharp. From what do they preach? The received text. It's the Word of God. Why I preach from the received text is solid, accessible, and practical. It emanates from, from a biblical theology of the providential preservation of God's inspired writings, it provides personal, thoughtful, and reasoned support for the traditional texts. It challenges with personal, thoughtful, and reasoned objections the modern critical text. Quote, to those who believe that God has providentially preserved his word, the question of the veracity and tenacity of scripture has been asked and answered. God has spoken. End quote, page 252. Those who favor the traditional texts of the Bible will find support, strength, and encouragement. Those who deny the traditional texts will be surprised, confronted, and challenged. Why I Preach from the Received Text supports the time-honored traditional texts and offers a new vision for the old paths, a scriptural and suitable way forward in the original text and Bible translations debate. A more technical, theologically driven work would make an excellent sequel to Why I Preach from the Received Text. And here ends the review. You can receive audiobook reviews and notes like this one, Word Magazine podcasts and sermons by subscribing to Christ Reformed Baptist Church's sermon audio feed on iTunes, by searching for Christ Reformed Baptist Church, 
For video material, you can subscribe to the Word Magazine channel on YouTube.com. You can also find written book reviews, notes, and articles like this one on my blog at jeffriddle.net. And you can follow me on Twitter at Riddle1689.